Hello, it is Tuesday, January 30th, 2024. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Tuesday crossword. That means we're going to be solving another early week, hopefully relatively gentle edition of the New York Times Crossword. And this, hopefully, gentle early week edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by uh, David Innes, Josh Lucas, Alex, and, as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the four of them. They're, of course, benefactors of the Daily Salt Patreon campaign, so they support this channel uh, week in, week out. They keep the whole thing going, and I'm very grateful to them for that. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel in that same way, you can head to patreon.com slash daily solve, or click the description field link to find the bonus videos available to patrons, and, of course, for benefactors, the Let's Check the Crosses official mug as well. Uh, you can also help out by subscribing to the channel on YouTube. That is quite a help. And you can like the videos, comment on them. All of that interaction uh, chips in. Um, so thanks if you do any of those things. And finally, there's the Daily Solve Discord chat server, of course, a nice friendly chat community. You can join via a description field link. So check it out through that as well, through that link. And finally, let's get on to today's crossword. This is a construction by Freddie Chang, who's constructed about... Uh, a dozen puzzles for the New York Times. It was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. It will have a theme. Let's start solving and find out what it is. Fitzgerald with nine recordings in the Grammy Hall of Fame. Surely Ella Fitzgerald, the great singer. Frat dudes. I assume this is uh, bros. And at last singer, James Etta James. All right, look at that. We've got Ella Fitzgerald and Etta James. I wonder if there's any possibility this will be theme related, given that they're also in, I don't know, auspicious positions in the grid. Who knows? We'll find out. Toss up at a football game. Is this the coin flip maybe? I think that's how they determine who starts. <laughs> I don't know enough to even know that. I know that's embarrassing. Uh, yeah, it's probably coin or flip. Uh, fading repetition, an echo. So something repeats but fades as it does so it echoes. Weaving machine is a loom, so this is going to be coin. Uh, the thing that is tossed up. Uh, shade close to lavender. Lilac is similar to lavender, I'd say. And that's for sure. I don't know. If something is sound in principle, it holds water, maybe? It holds water. It's basically true. And also, I see it's being highlighted by 63 across. So I guess that means Ella and Etta are not thematic. They're just related to one another in terms of subject matter, but they're, they don't seem to be part of the highlighted theme. Anyway, what about this? Poker variant that, despite its name, did not originate in Nebraska, Omaha. I've heard of Omaha poker. I didn't know it wasn't from Omaha, apparently. I wonder why it's called that. That's for sure. Maybe named after somebody whose name was Omaha Slim or something, something like that. I don't know. Anyway, that's for sure. And how, you might say, to emphasize something with which you agree. Uh, ditto is same. There we go. Simply repeating the thing that was previously said. Weaponry on wheels. Combat something? Weaponry on wheels. A combat, a... Is there something other than combat this could be? I'm not sure. What about the down? Something a person in jail might make. They might make bail. Okay, so... Um, and, then, and then be released uh, provisionally. So... So this probably is combat something. What about this? If some, all oh right, not for, if you're not for a proposal, you're anti it, you're against it. And then here we have to gradually withdraw from something would be to wean yourself from it or to wean yourself off of it. In this case, from, because the parenthetical from means we're applying that word both to the uh, clue and the answer. So gradually withdraw from, wean from. It's a date, you might say, if you set up a rendezvous with somebody. And sky high is a common expression. What about these downs up here? X series car maker, uh, BMW looks like. Luxury auto brand. And Stephen of the Crying Game, Stephen Ray. Boy, Stephen Ray, specifically of the Crying Game, is a real standby of the New York Times crossword. I feel as though a few years ago, this was popping up all the time. I haven't seen it quite so much recently, but I certainly, uh, certainly recognize it as a crossword as a crossword classic. Okay, four duos would be an octet, so four uh, no, four groups of two would be eight, so an octet, yes. That was right, I just started to say something that was wrong. 
put aside, if you put some, something aside for a while, you shelve it, perhaps. I think that's reasonable. And a manga genre involving giant robots. So that's uh, Japanese cartoons about robots are mecha. And uh, packing, if you're packing heat, you have a gun, you're, you're armed. Stately trees, elm trees can be, can be said to be majestic and stately. And padded parts in soccer are your shins. You could wear shin guards. So what is this? Oh, com oh it's a combat vehicle. <laughs> it's as simple as that, a combat vehicle. Okay. I don't know why that didn't immediately come to mind for some reason, but, but there we have it. It did with a couple of crosses. So up here, we can finish this corner off, hopefully. To gobble something is to eat it. And a three-way road layout is a three-way road layout. A try something. Uh, oops. I don't know why I can't see what this is either. Hmm. Three-way road layout. I don't know. Blank well done. Good work. A job well done doesn't seem to fit with the T. Hmm. Not music. If something's not musically dissonant, say it's tonal. So dissonance is when the the notes are in a. Um, uh, how would you describe that? A sort of <laughs> bitter kind of harmony. They they're they're not harmonious in a sort of. Uh, idealized sense, but I mean, dissonance can, dissonance can still be pleasing, but it's, uh, but it sounds clashing or sharp. Okay. Blank. Well done. It does look like a job well done. So what, what's this three-way road layout? Oh, T junction, T junction. Oh, that's not even that difficult. I just couldn't think of it. I was so t taken aback by the TJ there. Yeah. Don't know. Uh, but there we go, T-junction. That's that's actually straightforward. Yellowfin or albacore, uh, either one is a tuna. And because this is an or clue, we're only referring to either yellowfin tuna or albacore tuna, not both. That's why it doesn't need to be pluralized. And in fact, must not be. Okay, to lessen is to abase. There we go. So actually, I think abase was in the crossword the other day. I don't remember what it, how it was clued, but it was a similar idea. To lessen another person, perhaps, could be to abase them, to sort of efface them. Okay, rapper or actor on Law and Order SVU Ice T, I know, is in one of those, and it must be this one. So a pronouncement is an edict, a decree, perhaps, from a ruler, maybe. And a division in the NHL's Eastern Conference. Ugh, I'm trying to think if I might be able to infer this, but I don't know that I can. So I'll move on. Sound coming from a bay. Uh, nay, so a baying. Oh, I was going to say a baying horse, but maybe that's not what it is. Maybe it's a, I think a bay is a kind of horse. So that might be what it's actually referring to. In any case, I'm sure it's the answer. It's referring to the sound a horse makes. And the question mark there is indicating a bit of punnery. Um, because we're not referring to sound and bay, meaning bodies of water, but rather uh, noises and horses. Okay, ungulate, found backwards in ungulate. Okay, well, an ungulate, a hoofed, uh, you know, family, hoofed animal family, or maybe it's not a family, I don't remember what group grouping it is, but in any case, we can see nu, G-N-U, is spelled out in uh, reversed in ungulate, and that is one, so there we go. Layer of 61 across, and then 61 across says, what might be found in nesting boxes. I assume this is going to be hen and eggs. What's a nesting box? Is that is that where a hen lays, lays her eggs? I'm not sure, but I think it's the answer. And then here we have a woman with a habit. So in this case, not a habit meaning a tendency, but rather a habit meaning a clothing of a religious, uh, of a, you know, member of a convent of none. There we go. Okay, a religious order is maybe more accurately what I should have said. Uh, so plummets precipitously, falls, drops like a stone, falls like a stone. I'm not sure which it'll be, but it'll end in S. Uh, so that's part of the theme as well. So I don't know what it is. So we have holds water, was combat vehicle one? Yes. Holds water, combat vehicle, 
drops or sinks, actually. Drops, sinks, or falls like a stone. Hmm. Not sure. Okay. Uh, cry after being shocked. Yao, maybe, or something like that. Galactic time spans, eons. So, you know, something happening at a geological or galactic level would take a very long time span, such as an eon. Uh, which is sort of indefinitely long. Uh, really impresses, if something really impresses you, it awes you. And a bourbon order speci specification. You could order your bourbon neat. So, uh, you know, not with ice or, or water, I suppose. I guess you could have a few drops of water in there. Look blank this way. Look. Oh, oh look at it this way. Look at it this way. You might, uh, you know, suggest to somebody. Consider it from this perspective. Okay, until now is to date, maybe? Yeah. Okay, so you could say, uh, you know, this. We, we've earned this many to date until now. All right, a simpleton is an idiot. And a garment that may have spaghetti straps. Some sort of top. A what top may have spaghetti straps? A... Sleeveless? Yeah, there we go. That works. Um, I mean, that's plausible. Let's see if it's the answer. Hindu god of destruction, Shiva. There we go, or Shiva. And do do little of my fair lady Eliza do little is the character from my fair lady which is uh, based on Pygmalion adapted from Pygmalion and then citrus peel scrapings are zests so lemon zest for instance or other citrus fruit like lime they may come with big waves in Waikiki so this is in Hawaii so what would it be? Oh, oh no, right. Okay, I was thinking of surfing, as I'm sure we were meant to. That was the misdirection. But no, it comes with a big wave because you you might wave to someone and saying hello or aloha. So plural, alohas. There we go. They might come with, someone might wave to you and say that in Waikiki. Okay, uh, from this date, as of this date. There we go. So sort of a companion to our two-date entry there. And tax paying option. Uh, this was just in the crossword the other day e-file, which is when you can file your U.S. taxes electronically with an e, um, which I do I do accept as a, uh, an e answer without too much complaint because the IRS does in fact use that terminology. Oh, and here's our revealer finally. Bodies of advisory experts or when reinterpreted as an imperative, a hint to 1724, 38, and 52 across. Bodies of advisory experts, think, think tanks. Think tanks hold water. Think, think tank. Oh, I see. So it's 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 your your as an imperative. You're demanding. So you're saying think tanks. In other words, have tanks in mind. So what are some examples of tanks? Hold uh, a tank holds water. A tank, a combat vehicle. A tank is an example of that. Uh, if something falls or drops like a stone, it tanks. You could describe it. You know, a film is tanking. It dropped like a stone. I guess you could sort of say. Uh, or a sleeveless top, a tank top. There we go. Okay. So these are all tanks. And we've thought about them. Still don't know actually which word begins this phrase, but we'll, we'll get there eventually. Let's finish off these little corners. Souvenir for a, a basketball team. A net, maybe. They take the net home after the game. And EU distance units, uh, kilometers. I assume that's what that means. I mean, certainly used as a unit of distance in, in many places beyond the EU as well, and such as here in the UK, which is no longer part of the EU. But, uh, well, this country's funny, actually, in that um, miles and kilometers are, are used for lots of different purposes, kind of on top of each other. Uh, some things are very much in miles, and some things are, are very much in meters and kilometers. Anyway, um, the rest of the system is, is all metric. Um, which trials town, Salem, uh, Salem, Massachusetts is the famous witch trials. And then here you have solidifies uh, sets if, if, I don't know, something cement dries or something, it solidifies, I suppose. Okay, scooping since 1928 brand. This must be the ice cream brand Edie's. That's, boy, we've had quite a few things in today's puzzle that we've had just within the last couple of days, which obviously the constructor would have had no way to know that, but, um, but there we go. Uh, this was in there yesterday or the day before, I think. 
And if you yearned for something, you ached for it, you pined for it. And the for is applied both to the clue and the answer. So yearned for, pined for. What a check mark may signify, it may signify that this is okay or the answer is correct. Disapproving tongue clicks, tisk tisk, and uh, that's that's become a real standby. I've noticed in the crossword. And then here we have a termite resistance resistant hardwood is teak. Apparently, interesting. Okay, to work with thread might be to sew the thread. And then gumbo or goulash, uh, either one is a, a stew. Um, gumbo being a Cajun dish and goulash being what Czech maybe. Uh, maybe not exclusively Czech. Or Hungarian is maybe what I'm thinking of. I think I'm thinking of Hungarian. Sorry about that. That was a silly mix-up. Anyway, um, you'd be more likely to find borscht or something in, in the Czech Republic. Anyway, gushes, spews. Uh, as in, you know, spewing out matter or liquid or something. Lead into pod, a pea pod maybe? Lead in usually just means a word or prefix that can come before the clue word. So I'm thinking peapod. What about this? On the up and up. If you're on the up and up, you're legit maybe. You're doing things above board. It's it's legal and legitimate. So sly trick is a while if, if you, you know, deploy your wiles or sly tricks. Um, and then a lead into I think it is peapod. A high-flying metaphor for independence. Some sort of eagle. What kind of eagle? High flying metaphor for independence. Lone eagle? Is that a phrase? I don't I'm not really sure what this is. Sorry. Washed out. Washed out colors could be pale. So drops like a stone with that P there. Finally, we've disambiguated that. I don't remember if that was my first, second, or third <laughs> guess as to what that is. Were there even four, maybe? Anyway, uh, if something does make sense with up, it does add up. So you could say, ah, oh, those make sense. They add up. The figures, for instance, lead into, oh, here's another lead into pod. Oh, and this one is interesting. This one has a dash. So that means this one we're creating a compound where, where you know, it's a, it's a word. So we're looking for a prefix rather than a full word unto itself. So try maybe, tripod. That's interesting because I didn't even think of that for this one. Maybe I already had a cross that ruled it out. But but yeah, I think the, the dash really does change how you think about it. So this is a single word tripod. This looks like Dinah Singer Washington with three recordings in the Grammy Hall of Fame. Yeah, Dinah Washington. That must be the case. So this is Lone Eagle. Okay. I'm sure I've heard that before. I mean, it did come to mind. It doesn't strike me as an incredibly familiar phrase. I think of Lone Wolf. Lone Eagle. I don't know. It must be, it must be something that, that comes up. And then here we have division in the NHL's Eastern Conference. ATL, American something league, presumably, but I do not know. I hope it's right. It's not. Okay. Maybe this is wrong. Lead into pie. Pod, I mean. Makes sense with up. I don't know. I'll have to look through the puzzle. Okay, I'm going to do the thing that I do when this happens, which is pause the video so that I can just run through the, the clues in order, which is not very interesting to watch, but I'll do that and hopefully I'll find my mistake before too long. Okay, fortunately, it was pretty close to the top of the grid. This is wrong. And I and this is a good example of why you should always check the crosses as, as the official <laughs> mug of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign recommends because I didn't check this cross. I didn't even read the clue. And it's Turner in Historic Rebellion, Nat Turner's Revolution, Nat. So Lesson is not a base. I mean, I think it arguably could be, but it's not as good a match as a bait, which is the actual answer. So the sort of, you know, the the onslaught abates or it lessens and oh good, okay. <laughs> You never know after doing that if it's if there's going to be uh, another mistake lurking somewhere. Fortunately, in this case, there wasn't. So there we go. That was the Tuesday crossword. And we had our nice, simple think tanks uh, theme. This is one of those that you could you could solve the entire theme without paying any attention to it at all, because uh, these all of the individual theme clues are ordinarily clue. The answers are ordinarily clued. And even the revealer uh, has its own standalone standard clue of bodies of advisory experts think tanks. So 
uh, when told to think tanks, what we thought was holds water, combat vehicle, drops like a stone, and sleeveless top. And uh, and there we have it. That was the theme. And in fact, I haven't mentioned this recently, but uh, this revealer, and the revealer is the um, thematic clue and answer that sort of tie together what's going on throughout the rest of the theme. And the thing I wanted to point out was that it is positioned precisely as we would expect by Lyle's Law, Lyle's Law named for a, a viewer of this channel who observed that the revealer is most frequently positioned in the across clues towards the bottom of the grid and very frequently precisely three cells up from the southern border, generally speaking, abuts the eastern border of the grid. So this is the exact classical position of the revealer. It's not always there. Sometimes it's in the middle of the grid, sometimes it's somewhere else. But this is where Lyle's Law suggests it is frequently found. And today it was exactly where we'd, where we'd first look. And that was the Tuesday crossword. Um, I think a fairly gentle puzzle, possibly gentler than yesterday's. I don't know. Let me know if you agree or not with that interpretation. Um, let me know in the comments or the Daily Self Discord chat server. I am always curious. And there we have it. That was the Tuesday crossword, the Tuesday video. I'll be back tomorrow, Wednesday, for the midweek mid-difficulty puzzle, so join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Uh -huh.